we're going to start this morning. If you don't have a Bible, there's some back there for rent. But it's always good to follow along in the Word so you know I'm not lying to you. so you might have to readjust. 2 Timothy chapter 3, and it reads like this, This know also that in the last days parable times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unholy or unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Amen. Truce breakers. In other words, they don't keep their word. Uh, false accusers. They rely on you. Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those who, that, those that are good. Amen. If you're really serving the Lord, they, they hate you. They don't like you. Traitors. Heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. We thank you that it's true and that it's working right now in our lives. Father, we love you and, and we ask God, open our hearts, Lord. Open our hearts and open our ears to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say this morning. Holy Spirit, speak through me this morning. Touch my lips, anoint me once again, Father, to preach as the very oracles of God. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Thank you, Lord. For those of you that don't know me, amen. I'm not mean. Amen. You might think somebody. Somebody said a little girl. One of my friends' little granddaughters called the other day on my phone. I guess she got my answering machine and she said, "Grandpa, I don't know who that is, but he sounds mean." <laughs> and uh, I was laughing, and I was like, "Man, you know what I mean?" Uh, the the thing is, is that like, like Sister Mary said, that me and my wife we do. You know what I mean? We preach, and sometimes we do preach hard, and we, you know, preach direct and stuff like that. But you know what? If you love your kids, you're going to tell them. Amen. If you don't love them, you could be best friends and both go to hell together, I guess. You with me? But if you love your kids and they're doing wrong or they're not doing what they should be, not that they're not doing right, not that they're doing wrong, but they might not be doing what they should be. That's the catch some of you are in right now. Amen. You're not doing wrong. You're not doing drugs or drinking or going out, you know, doing whatever it was you used to do. It's just that you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And you got to realize to God that's sin. When you know to do good and do not do it to you, that is sin. And if you're a good parent, you're going to tell your kids, hey, well, what are you doing? If you see your kid laying on the couch, and you know what I mean? Uh, 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 not doing nothing, don't want to get a job, they're laying around, they're, they're, you know what I mean? They're, they got the air conditioning on and they're sleeping, they're sleeping or watching TV all day while you go to work. Right. And they got good hands and good feet and a smart brain and everything else and you allow them to remain there? Do not blame that kid. Right. Yes. It's your fault. Right. Right. Amen? Come on now. A good parent, a godly parent, a person that fears the Lord and wants to raise their home right will say, Mijo, Ita, get up from there. Sometimes my son would hate me. I don't know what he would do, but sometimes he'd come home. And I'd be coming to the church at 7 in the morning or whatever, and, 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 and he, he'd come home, and then I'd go home a little later, 9 or whatever, and it's when we lived here, and he'd be laying on the couch thinking, Dad's gone. You with me? 
And so I could just chill out. And when I walked in, he, he jumped up because he already knows. If, if Dad's out working, if Dad's out doing something, I can't lay around my house. Come on now. We can't do it. It's our fault sometimes that our kids are like they are. You with me? It's not a, it, I mean, it's not that you can't change. You can change. It's just going to be a lot harder now. Come on now. But if you love them, you're going to tell them, hey, get up from there. Get showered. Go get a job. Drip, iron your clothes. Put something nice on. Go do your laundry and, and, and look presentable. Get over there at 8 o'clock in the morning, not at 5.30 in the evening asking for an application. Yeah. Right. If you love them, you'll tell them. Yeah. You with me? Well, I don't want to get them mad at me. Are you with me? Yeah. But sometimes as a parent, you take that. You, you, you have to take that role that, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offend them. I'm going to get them mad at me because I'm going to tell them, listen, you're not going to be here and be lazy. you got to get up from there. you got to do something. Go get a job. You have to do it. You're not going to lay here no more. Listen, it's either you get up and get a job and you get your stuff and you get your life in order or you leave my home. But I will not supply your need. I will not feed a lazy bum. Come on now, you do not come over here. You want to go sleep in the crack house? You want to go sleep in the street? You want to go sleep on a park bench all day long and not work and not do anything? Go ahead, but you won't do it here. See, when you say the, 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 the phrase in Joshua 24 where it says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, you got to understand that comes involved in there too. You with me? Amen. Amen? I mean, you, you got to understand that. You know what I mean? It's not that you're mean. And my son thought for years, I was so mean. No, I'm trying to help you. And one of these days, he's going to know that. Man, my dad was trying to help me. I, you know what I mean? He wasn't trying to harm me. My, my, my stepfather would always... You know what I mean? Because we were little marquels, we were little spoiled brats. We were, and he would always get mad and upset, and we always thought it was abusive. We always thought, you lazy bum, you this and that, and stuff like that. And so you only take your part of, well, well this is what they said to me. And when I got saved, and when I grew up, and I started having my own children, I realized he wasn't really saying all that bad stuff I thought he was. What he was trying to do as a stepfather with these rebellious teen, the little kids and teenagers was help me. But he didn't know how to help me. So sometimes it would come out in a very strong or very straightforward, or, or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Lazy bum, get up from there, or whatever. But in our eye, we're offended and hurt and all this other stuff. Well, get up and do what you're told and you won't be offended and hurt. And I realized that later, he was only trying to help me, not hurt me. You with me? And we take sometimes that authority because, see, nobody ever told you what to do. Can I talk to you as a father this morning? Yes. Nobody ever told you what to do. Your mom and dad didn't make you do anything. If they did, you cussed them out or ran away. Yes. Come on now. How many of you ran away from, how many of you ladies ran away from, from home when you were a teenager? Why? Because it was, you were such an awesome kid? <laughs> we were rebellious, we didn't want nobody to tell us. Some of you young men ran away or went to your friends or went to live, I'll go live with my friend, I don't have to follow these rules. And it's all about authority and it's all about the rules. And we, then we grow up in our lives and we get saved and then we come to church and God does save us and He's working in our lives. And again, right there, the drugs are gone, the alcohol's gone. And what do we face? A-U-T-H-O-R-I-T-Y authority. You were going to tell me what to do. Not even a husband. I, that's why I'm not married. Sometimes I'll be saying stuff and I can hear the men say, that's why I'm single. No, you're single because you're a knucklehead and couldn't make it right with the first three wives. Four. 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 But, but the authority that was in your life is in your pastors, and they're like your, they, they become like parents to you, and sometimes they become your enemy because they're telling you the truth, and you don't want to hear it. 
And you know what? I'll just go to another tr church. You with me? And hopefully you don't get some spineless pastor that wants, he does want your money because he's got to pay his salary. And, and will tell you anything that tickles your ear just so you'll come and sit in his services. Because they don't want, they want to be that friend with benefits. They want to be that friend of, the, of, the, of their teenage daughter or their teenage son. Instead of standing for authority and doing what's right and being the parent, they want to be best friends and dress alike and, and, and come on now, yeah. act alike and be alike and, and, and date boys the same age. <laughs> huh? Then they get saved and come to church and pastor, you know what I mean? He starts preaching and he starts talking. See, some of you men, sometimes I irk you and you get mad at me and I hope you do. I hope it doesn't go in one ear and out the other. I hope sometimes I offend you so that you can change and that you can get better and that God can prepare in you a husband one day. Come on now. You know these good husbands that are out there, ladies? They didn't just happen. No, guess what? Guess what? There was a mama somewhere. And a daddy who showed that young boy how to treat a woman. There was a mama somewhere who did not put up with disrespect and didn't let him call her a bee and didn't, and didn't just clean his room because he wouldn't do it anyway. She raised him, she taught him right, and she taught him how to respect and honor a woman. Come on now. You with me? Amen. Push her chair in when she sits down, not kick it out. <laughs> So somewhere somebody prepared that and that's authority. Somebody prepared that man or somebody prepared that young lady for adulthood. That's what it should be all about. Not about going to the circus and eating ice cream and buying your kids toys every time they ask. It's about training up young men and young women that are going to look to a woman one day or look to a man in honor or respect. And a lot of times you see these ladies coming around and your daughter-in-laws and everybody else all beat up and abused and all this stuff. And it's like, you know, you feel sorry for them, but you're the one that created the monster. <laughs> huh? God help us. We go to church and we hear stuff like this and sometimes... It doesn't sit right. It doesn't because we're, we're like them stallions and mustangs running the mountains. And then you get over here and we corral you at 1010 Troy. God had to bring you in by your ear. All drugged out, all messed up, out of jail, out of the crack house and this and that. And God had to corral you and teach you. Come on now. He puts leaders and, and, and people over your life to help guide you, guard, govern you. To guard you, to guide you. You with me? Yeah. And sometimes we don't. I mean, a Mustang doesn't like to be corralled. You with me? They don't like to be in the dub kick, and they'll, they'll. You try and get on them. You try and use them. Hey, can you help? What? It's funny. Somebody's got to break you. And it wasn't God that broke the Mustangs, it's a man. God used a man. God gifted a man to help break them horses. God could have just went, be rideable. But God put it in the heart, in the mind, in the understanding of man to, to lasso that thing, to, 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 to bring him into that corral and then begin to start training him around, bringing him in circles and doing whatever it is they do him until they can finally start to touch him and put a saddle on him and break them. A man God has to use. I don't need anybody. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. Your pastora is trying to break you, ladies. And some of you are so rebellious and stubborn, man. You're like a, one of the worst Mustangs. And she's trying to, you know what I mean? And you keep kicking her and, and, and expecting love back. You with me? Sometimes she has to whack you with that stick. Don't you ever kick me again. You know what they did over there, that lady? She told me. That's why I was laughing when Pat and Sister Mary was talking about 
people out there talking, you know, about new home ministries, and there's a lot that say we helped them, and this and that, and there's a there's a few out there that will say, oh, Pastor Susan, I like Pastor Vince, yeah. Yeah. but Pastor Susan, you know what? It's always the ladies. Yeah. Yeah. It's never men. It's always the ladies. Yeah. And you know what? Every single one of those are the stubborn, rebellious Mustangs. And not even a husband, if you notice, they're probably single. Not even a husband can break them. Not even God himself can break them. And he raises people up like Pastor Susan to help break them and to break your life. You with me? And it's like, you know what? Come on now. That's that authority you've always been running from. Think about it. You always fought with your mom. Those ladies that are here, you always fought with your mom. You always rebelled against her. Maybe you didn't have one. Maybe it was you never had that authority. You just kind of run wild. But God brought you here. Because he wants to corral you. And he wants to break you. So that he might use you for his honor and his glory. Come on, somebody give him some praise. Don't run. Don't jump the fence. Come on now. There's, you notice there's no fences around New Hope? It's, it's minimum security. So you can walk out the door and go down Troy and down 8th and we'll never see you again. We can't run and hassle you and tie you in and all. Got another one. Come on, bring her. Help me, Manuel. Help me. She's a heavy one. Come on. <laughs> oh, what did you say, a heifer? <laughs> oh, Andrea. <laughs> but all these people in this picture here in 2 Timothy 3 were people who claimed to be Christians. They have a form of godliness, but deny the power, deny the authority to change them. This is good stuff. Amen. They don't want to be changed. They don't, they, don't, they don't need nobody. I don't need no pastor. I don't, I don't even need to go to church to be a Christian, they say. And I'll challenge their Christianity every time. Because God died, Jesus died for his church. And Jesus loves his church so much. And he puts gifts in the church. And he puts helps in the church. Come on now. He said, upon this rock I'll build my church. He didn't say, I'll build you over there at uh, 1827 or wherever you live. Uh, you know? Yeah. He builds churches. You with me? Yeah. And all these people right here, they said that they have a form of godliness but deny the power. It says that they loved pleasure more than they loved God. Right. Did it say they didn't love God? No, it said that they loved pleasure more than their love for God. In other words, if you have a, you know how justice has that scale, and, and they have the two things hanging down, you put something on each side, you got to put a just weight on the other, and balance them out at a certain weight. If you, if you put the God on one end and the love for the world on the other end, the love for the world is going to outweigh that, because, you know, they know they should go to church, and they know they should read the Word, and they know... They should be a Christian and not do the things the world does, but you know, sometimes it wins and sometimes but the but the love for the world was more than their love for God. Didn't say and we're speaking of Christian people here. Haughty, high minded, disobedient to their parents. I told you the other day, demonic times. He said in the last days perilous, demonic, terrible times will come. Why? Because the church will be in this order here. Lovers of, of, of pleasure more than lovers of God. Disobedient to their parents. High-minded, proud. Uh, they're, they're, they don't keep their word. They're truce breakers. Are you a truce breaker today? Are you a truce keeper? Or, 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 a, uh, or you keep your word? You with me? When you say you're going to do something, I'll be there tomorrow at 3. You should be there tomorrow at 3. Oh, I forgot. That's showing you that there's some stuff in your life still worldly. You with me? Amen? 
One of the guys was telling me just the other day from a different city, he tells me, Pastor, that he had left this church, and he said, Pastor, I didn't understand it. He says, because we were there early for prayer. We were there early, you know what I mean, to, to seek the Lord and do all this before the service started at 10. He said, but Pastor, we wouldn't get started till 10.30 because the pastor would wait for people to wander in at 10.30ish. And then he would start service. He goes, yeah, but he, he's neglecting the people that have been there since 9 or 9.30, praying before the, the 10 a.m. service. Do not put 10 a.m. on your service. Do not put 10 a.m. on your appointment. Do not put 10 a.m. If you're going to show up at 10.30. Around here, 10 is 10. Usually it's before 10. You with me? I don't know who it was. I don't know if it was my mom or somebody said that if you ain't there 15 minutes ahead, it's you're late. You with me? But it's, but it's, it's little things like that that spoil the vine. Little foxes that spoil the vine. Don't keep our words. Don't do this. And pastor comes in and preaches it and we get mad at him. No change. We, we did it Thursday night. We went over it Thursday night, right? Uh, 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 do not be conformed any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You with me? And we have to renew that. We have to change. We have to understand. Listen, man, I've, I've lived that wild Mustang life all my life, and now, now I need this man. I need this man of God. I need that woman of God in my life. That's a gift of God. That's somebody that God gave me. And she's going to form me. She's going to help. Even if it takes a hammer and a fire and, 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 a, and a, you know what I mean? He said, my, in, in Psalm 23, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Staff was to walk. The rod was to hit. And sometimes when you're doing sheep, sometimes you're hey, stop it. And they had the hook. And you had to hook them and bring them, get over here. You with me? And sometimes in our lives, we need that. God pl placed authority in our lives. You with me? So that to help teach us, to help grow, grow us up, so that we can learn to deal with our children. How are you going to be a parent if your pastors never tell you anything and you're, you're trying to raise kids, but you, you're, if you don't know how to do it? We've raised five of them, man. We know what we're talking about. I was laughing the other day because I was like, I don't know who was saying something, but I said, you know that I, I used to have contracts with my kids. I had a contract written out and I'd say, listen, this is what happened. You were messing up in school. You were doing this and that and all this. I would make a legal con, well, not legal, but to me it was because I was the law. It, it, it was a contract and we sat down together and we agreed on the outcome. What are your consequences if this happens? You choose. And they would, yeah, I guess a week you know, grounded or whatever it was, you know what I mean? And then we would write that out, and you know what I mean? I had a contract, okay, well, go ahead and what, date it. We're going to sign it. I'll sign here. You sign it. Everything you agreed to. And then when they got in trouble and when they did wrong, they came home late, they got an F on their report, whatever it was, then we, we, we let's go back over here. Let's see our contract. Go ahead and sit down there. Do you want anything to drink? No, not to. All right, let's go over this contract. Look, I'm going to give you a copy of it. Go ahead and follow me along. And we're, we're going through this. That's, oh, oh, look, that's, uh, didn't you just do that? Oh, look, what were the consequences? Oh, shoot, we're going to take this away, and you're going to be grounded for this long. Okay, and so that, that's the consequences. They do it in prison. You have to go through legalities. You have to do all this. Because I said so. You tell your kids, that doesn't work for them. And you know you have no authority over their lives. And the, the one that's grounded for a week is out playing with their friends outside. And, there's, and you have no authority. You have no power. Man, I'm not even supposed to be talking about this. <laughs> you with me? Amen. Amen. I better get on track here. <laughs> All right, he, he, th this, is, this is the situation here. In 2 Timothy, perilous times, demonic times are here, right? Yeah. And, it's, and I wrote a note here, I said, we are literally uh, 
literally fighting demons, amen, influencing ourselves, influencing ourselves. There's demonic influence around you every day. Influencing our children and influencing society. So what can we do? Is it hopeless? Should we give up or give in? Run and hide? There's a lot of bad stuff happening out there. Our kids are around it. I don't know if you guys understand what your children are around in high school, middle school, in, in elementary school. I don't know. I mean, you know, we just like, just, don't you tell them you're a Christian? Don't you show them what would Jesus do, bracelet? <laughs> Well, he was going to beat me up. Did you show him your bracelet? What would Jesus do? <laughs> what, what, what can we do? Well, you know what I mean? And most of us, what we do is we go through so much in life with our family, in our marriages, with our children, our finances, all this stuff. Man, it's like we're drowning. What do we do? We give in. We go, oh, I'm not going to go to church no more. That should never even come out of your mouth. You ought to slap your own mouth and rebuke yourself when that comes out of your mouth. You're not going to give up. Why would you give up? Why would you give in? Why would you stop coming to church? Come on now. Amen? You ought to ground yourself. Put yourself on a three-day fast for that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ephesians 6.12 said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yes. Amen. Yes. Do you know that he just came out of chapter 5? He's talking about, your, he's talking about marriage. He said your, 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 your spouse is demonically influenced. We're not wrestling flesh and blood. We want to get married. On one of the Rocky shows, he does, Hey, Rocky, this, this Tommy Gunn, he wants to fight. I tell him to get married. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to fight in the ring, man. Pastor Freddy Garcia used to say, man, he said, man, I'd call him the front. We'd have their, we'd have their wedding, you know, the ceremony. He said, we ended it with go ahead and touch gloves, go to your corners and come out fighting, man. <laughs> When he preached the message one time, I gotta find that, man. He talked about fighting fair in marriage, man. He said, don't be pulling out your mama jokes and all that stuff, man. He said, fight fair in marriage. He goes, you're gonna fight anyway. Might as well fight fair. I can't remember the message, but it was heavy duty. Did you? The cassette? Oh, you gotta give it to me. It's mine, sucker. <laughs> Hey, you know what happens when you clean house? <laughs> you find stuff you should have listened to back then, amen? Cleaning house. Well, well, I'm going to wear these, or where did this come from? I'm going to try that, you know? You find your workout equipment underneath all the clothes is what happens. We're demonically influenced ourselves, our children, my goodness. You with me? We, you know what I mean? Uh, could you imagine just for a moment your own struggle? Yeah. Your own struggle for purity. Your own struggle for pure eyes. Come on now. Your own struggle for a pure heart. God, I'm not talking about just lust or looking at I'm talking about just a good attitude. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just looking at your boss or looking at somebody. Because why? They represent authority. They're always on me. They're always telling me. And I don't know why me. And man, and man. And you're right there with the co-workers and talking about, well, you know what, he's stupid anyway. You know what, man, you know what he looks like? He looks like, you know, <laughs> you've been telling jokes and cutting your boss down and everything, man. Laughing at stuff about him and everything. Come on, I used to do it. Hmm? <laughs> Why? Because they're authority. They represent the man. You don't understand, God says, I've given every one of those men authority. The cop that pulled you over, God said, I gave him authority. Yeah. One girl was a Christian driving, got busted for speeding, and she said, oh, I thought you'd let me go because I'm a Christian, because she noticed he was a Christian. 
And he said, oh no, he said, I was about to give you a warning. He says, but now I will ticket you. And she said, I don't understand. He says, you're a Christian. He said, yeah, you should have known better. And you know what I mean? This is the way God's going to teach you. Gave her the ticket and she should have opened her big mouth. Huh? <laughs> We, our society is influenced demonically. It says we don't wrestle flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. You with me? Spiritual wickedness in high places. But I'm telling you, our government and all these people, I, I watch the, these, 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 I don't even have nothing to do, man. I hate this voting and all this other stuff because they're all liars, man. Who do you trust? But they're slandering each other, throwing dirt on each other. Well, this one, he wanted to, to take away the abortion pill and, you know what I mean, and, 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 and do, give you, make you accountable for your sin, and basically what he said. And he wants to do this, and even if you're raped, he wants to have a, this law and this stuff about abortion and this and that. And it's like, man, what is he trying to do? Do right? Yeah. And the world slanders. You don't know any of them, and I hate all that stuff. I hate to, are you voting? Don't even talk to me, man. I'll talk. When I get there, I'll pray about it and see what God says. Usually what we do is we go, we have a meeting like this, or, or a regular, or just an evening meeting, and we'll just talk about issues. This is amendment such and such. This is so and so. This is the president. And and never, never am I by it. Never am I ever saying, well, you know what? Obama, vote for Obama, vote for Obama. You do not ever mix politics in the church. Never. But you got to be informed. And so what we do is we come and talk about the issue, say this is the pros, this is the cons, this is the amendment number. You vote how you see it. We just inform people, but we never, you'll never see political signs in my church. If you do, take them down and throw them out into the street because they're not ours. Because we don't do that here. You with me? We, we do vote. We encourage you to vote. We encourage you to get involved or, or you know what I mean, to, to, to be caught up and understand what's going on and vote how you feel the Spirit of God is telling you to vote. But if I voted for George Bush and you voted for Obama, you know what I mean, I'm not going to hate you because of that. You with me? I still love you. But there's a, a go, a governmental and the influences you see going on right now, they're demonic, man. Our, our president has literally brought in, he made this, he said, this nation is not a Christian nation. It used to be for the last what? How old are we? 200 years? For all them years, we were founded as a Christian nation. This man come in and said, we're no longer a Christian nation, we're a Muslim nation. We're a, we're a Buddhist nation, we're a Hindu. Whatever you are, that's what we are. And so you realize, well, that's, that's just him. I know that's demonically inspired. What do we do? Yeah, Second Chronicles 7, 14, pray. You with me? But there's other things we can do. Let's look at them real quick here. So, uh, I turn with you, Matthew chapter 10. And the title of this one, Alex, Super Saints. Because <laughs> sometimes we think for our children, for our families, in our situation, there's nothing we can do. And I'm telling you, there is. God gives us power. In Matthew chapter 10, verse number one it said and when he had called unto him the twelve disciples amen you with me amen. and when god when jesus had called to him his twelve disciples he gave them what Glory. he gave them power mine says but it's the same thing i'll explain in a minute but he gave them power and authority stop there end there put a period no it doesn't does it he gave them power or authority. Uh, what does it say? Against unclean spirits. What did you say, Andrea? To kick out? To kick out the evil spirits. To cast them out. And to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. Huh? 
What do we do with all these demons everywhere? Demonic influences and these powers and principalities. The Bible said in Ephesians 6, 12, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He, he right here, Jesus gives his 12 apostles, his 12 disciples authority, power. You with me? He gives them the authority and the power over all, not some, all unclean spirits. All demons, all demonic influences, and over sickness and diseases, over all manner of diseases. You with me? He gave his disciples power. Superman had power. You with me? I wish I was trying to find a Superman shirt, sis. I'm going to wear it this morning. Just a tight, snug one. <laughs> I would have been preaching and about here I would have just ripped my shirt over and you would have seen just a superman. I might look like Clark Kent, but under these clothes, I am superman. <laughs> oh dear Lord. Don't laugh at me, look at your shape. Imagine yourself in tights, you'd be a little sausage. <laughs> Or just a skinny bag with nothing there. Just a bag. No meat. <laughs> oh, Lord. Imagine yourself in some spandex for a minute. No, that's not a good sight. Not for me, anyway. Maybe for some of you, but not for me. Oh, dear Lord. Shut up. She's looking at me and laughing. What's up with that? Well, I think she just caught a glimpse of Oscar and some spandex. We like, oh, <laughs> oh, glory. Or Manuel, no? Or Ruben. Where's Ruben? With some flames on it. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> pastor, you say, Pastor, Luke chapter 10. I gotta make you laugh sometime. Luke, we're in Matthew 10, we're going to Luke, Lucas. <coughs> San Lucas. Get there. My Bible, man, the words are so big, it takes me 15 minutes to flip from Matthew to Luke. In, in verse number one, he said, And these things, the Lord, or after these things, the Lord appeared unto appointed other 70 also, he, and he sent them two by two before his face into every city and place wherein he himself would go. Down to verse 9, and it just goes on to talk about the, what he told them, instructions he told them. Verse 9, he said, And heal the sick that are there, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come, unto, come nigh unto you. The kingdom of heaven has come nigh. So he appointed his twelve disciples and gave them power over every spirit, over every demon, over over everything. Here he appoints another, some say 70, some says 72. It says 70 there. But he, he takes not only his disciples, because see, some of us, and, and there's a lot of people, and even other Christian religions, that was, they believe in the Lord, they love the Lord, they've been saved and stuff, but they don't believe in anything kind of miracles, signs, wonders, healing, speaking in yeah. tongues. They don't believe in that. Yeah. They just say it went out with the apostles. When yeah. the apostles died, that went out. You know what I mean? And that's not true because yeah. here he gives another 70 men and, and he sends them out and says, I want you to go out, man, preach the gospel, heal the sick, man, cast out devils, and tell them when you're done, the kingdom of God has been upon you. Hmm? So it wasn't just the 12. 
So you might want, might, might want to remember that because that's a, that's a good little theme there for our Baptist friends. Don't believe in healing. I said, that's why you're sick. You believed you'd be healed. Well, I don't believe in tongues. That's why you don't speak in tongues. If you believed, you'd speak in tongues. Come on now. I don't believe in casting out devils. If you did, then you'd, have pro you'd be able to help your husband. <laughs> oh, my mom said, I got it. The last one here. Oh, no, 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 wait, wait. We're not done with this. Go over to verse 17. It said, And the seventy returned again with what? Joy. 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 That means they were happy. Could you imagine they returned all discouraged, hanging <laughs> face, all mad and sad. And it said they returned with joy. He said, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us. Amen. Through your name. And he said this unto them. I, be, I, I was checking it out and I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Amen. He saw, look at verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Them are demons. And over, I give you power over all the powers of the, of the enemy. He said, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hmm? He was talking to these 70. He said, listen, they, they went out. They said, man, the devils were subject to us. Lord, we were casting them out in Jesus' name. They were subject means they were submitted. In other words, they told the devil, get out of here and go into that dog. They would get out and go into a dog. They wouldn't go into a cat. They wouldn't go into a horse. They wouldn't go into the water. They went into the dog. Why? Because they were submitted to the men and God, men and women of God who have the authority to, to, over them. And he said, hey, behold, check this out. I give you power over every devil, over every enemy, over sickness and disease. I give you authority. You with me? I, I, talk, I, I talk about when I worked at the prison, and we used to go there, and we were in training, and, I, and they, they, they told us, go in and talk to the guys and tell them to do stuff and all this. And I told one inmate, I said, hey, do me a favor. I said, why don't you go over there and do this? And he says, nah. I said, what do you mean, nah? Who are you? I said, I'm the new, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm the new uh, 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 correctional officer. He goes, I don't have to listen to you. I said, why not? What do you mean? You go do that. He said, I'm not going to do it. I go, why not? He goes, because you ain't got the badge. I listen to the badge. He said, see, if he tells me to do it, I'll do it because he has a badge. You don't. You're new. You ain't even got it yet. I thought I had power. I thought I had authority. I thought, you know, I was new. You know what? And he walked in and said, nope, you don't have the authority yet. The moment you have that authority on, yes, sir. He said, but until then, I'm not doing what you said. You, you, you with me? And it's because I didn't have the authority. I didn't have the badge. You with me? This, this was the authority. This was the badge. This, this gave me the right to call all the, 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 the correctional officers to my help or my aid. All I had to do was get on the, we got something here, you know, you, I need help. And there would have been a bunch of people there to help me because of this. You with me? Yeah. Now my dunamis authority in Acts 1-8 where he says you, get, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, that was my God. You with me? Yeah. But, but, it, but in all rights, you, you should hardly ever have to pull that gun out. I shouldn't have to pull a gun out and shoot you. <laughs> right? I should just be able to say, hey, I need this, I need some help, I need this done, and you can look and say, I'm my pastor. Amen. Amen. Willingly. Jesus said, I give to you authority over demons and over sickness. 
They said demons were subject to us. They were submit. They bowed down to what we said. So you don't have to worry about, you know what I mean? Well, you know, this and that. And I told you one day, I said, the, or the, the little girl that, or the mom that went looking for, the, for Jesus because her de daughter was demon possessed. What, did, what do you picture? A woman, a girl on the floor vomiting and she's foaming and she's just got a devil. Could you picture a rebellious teenage daughter? He said in the last days they'll be disobedient to their parents. You with me? Can you picture a daughter that just won't do nothing or a son that just wants to do whatever, lay on the couch, and not, not go to school or anything like that? God said, I give you authority. Yeah. Think about, we, we just don't understand our authority. You with me? We're not fighting flesh and blood. That's why instead of trying to yell and, 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 and all this stuff, to go kneel down and say, okay, Daddy, I need some help here. Dad, that kid needs to be disciplined and he ain't listening to me. God, I ask you and I give you permission, discipline this boy. Ooh, you wait till your daddy gets home, they say, right? That's what my wife used to say. You wait till dad gets home and man, and they, they, they wait. My daughters are, <laughs> they'd be waiting for the car to come in. They start crying. They do. Dad's home. Do you guys remember? Remember when mom would tell you that and dad would come home? Some of you didn't get a spanking. That's why you're in the condition you are today. <laughs> I told the little kids, I was telling Austin and Silas and them, I said, when I was in your age in school, they spanked us. Huh? Could you imagine your principal calls you instead of saying, yeah, I suspended your kid or this or that, or called him and said, hey, I just want to let you know, I just gave your kid five good whippings. He's here crying now. Said he was sorry and he's going back to class. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Mr. Principal, for your authority and the dunamis that you used to whip him with. <laughs> huh? Oh, Lord. Let's see what my last one here is here. Mark 16, 15. So he gave the, the 12 the, the authority. He gave the 70 the authority. And now he gives the authority to believers. You said you believed in Jesus, right? I mean, I don't know about you, but if I'm a Christian, I want power. I think this is where we lack as Christians. We don't understand it. We assume the pastors have power. Come on now. Tonight you'll see power in the, in the pulpit tonight when Tim preaches to you. You'll see authority, you'll see dunamis, you'll see Holy Ghost gifts, you'll see this happening tonight. And you, and you can receive that, but you cannot receive. It's hard for you to understand. God has given you power and authority to trample on demons and, and, and sickness. He's given you the power. You have it inside of you. Ladies, I'm telling you today, those of you that are here that are single mothers, God has given you. It's, it wasn't intended for you. There was supposed to be a husband there. There was supposed to be a head there. Somebody that was the authority. Somebody that was the disciplinary. But for whatever reason, he's not there today. But God has given you a spiritual authority over those kids. To cast out the devil if you need to. You with me? And uh, you with me? And it's to train and it's to teach. Not everything's over there spanking your kid. The majority, remember I told you this was last resort. The board was last resort. You with me? And there's never a hit with a, with a, with a closed fist. You with me? There should never ever be any facial hitting anyway. It's always discipline. Once they get a certain age, once they get past 11 or so, then the, the, you got to stop spanking the kids. The dude's bigger than you. <laughs> but you sit, I mean, how does, the, how does the boxing coaches do? Do they beat them up and tell them to get in there now? Or do they instruct them, they train them, they show them, they, they correct them, they, they're, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. 
and, and, and that's what they are, that godly, that, that, or that, that natural influence in their life, telling them what to do. Hey, we're going to drop you out, go run. Come back, do push-ups, do sit-ups, and do this. And they're that authority, but then they sit there and they train them verbally. During rounds, they'll sit there and they come back all beat up. And they're like, no, dude, you're doing great. Oh, bleeding and everything. No, 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 you're doing great. Listen, breathe, breathe. Kid just got suspended. What do you do? Go in and beat the fire out of him in front of the principal. Or do you instruct him and tell him, you know what, man, was that, 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 that was not a good decision you made. Man, you're suspended. And now, you know what I mean, you have this consequence and this and this and this. Not with me, with them. I ain't even got to mine yet. But man, was that a bad decision? Was that, man, what would happen if you hadn't went outside with your friends to go, you knew they were going to smoke weed and you went outside with them anyway? What would happen if you would have just went to class? You with me? And then now we got to go home and we got to look at our list again. You with me? I'm sorry, I don't mean to be teaching on family, but it's the way it is. Matthew 16, 15, and he said, or Mark 16, 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen? The verse jumped out, while well, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Right? He said, and these signs or tokens shall follow them, that's me and you, that believe. If you don't believe, they're not going to follow you. In my name, he said, shall they cast out devils. In my name shall they speak with new tongues. He said, they shall take up, serp they they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. He said, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. 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 This, these are following them that believe. Yeah, I don't believe in that. Well, they're not going to follow you. If you believe in Jesus, these signs will follow you. You've got to just do them. You with me? I wrote a little note here that said this. And you heard me say it before, but I just wrote it down. He said, um, we do the possible, God does the impossible. We do the, the natural, God does the supernatural. We do what we can, God does what we can't. We do our best, God does the rest. God has called you and he's given you power. He's given you the anointing to be a super saint. You can wear the big S. They say, man, you like Superman? No, man, that's for Super Saint. Huh? I found my wife some footed pajamas, you know, the ones that zip up, the old ones? And they got footsies and everything. And on the front, it has a pink S. Don't you dare go, ladies, go get them. If I see you in them, I'll be like, you dirty dog. Let me copycat, get your own ideas. But they're footed in pajamas, and she likes those. But in the back, it has the cape. <laughs> I told her, you can run around <laughs> with your cape on. And, uh, you can use it for dramas or wear them at home or every, hey. Superwoman. You can be a superwoman. Ask God for wisdom. You with me? Understand your authority. That's why it's so important you read this book. If you don't know your authority, you're not going to know what power you have. God will give you power to help your own children. God will give you power to help you. You're the biggest problem you have, not them. You with me? When you help you, you'll know how to help them. And when you help them and you get your house in order, then you can look and say, how can I help society? How can I get out there and help the Women's Pregnancy Center? How can I get out there and help these teenage mothers? How can I get out there and help these young gang members? How can I get out there and do something, even if it's a physical sport, even, you know what I mean, a coach? Don't you guys ever remember having godly coaches? 
<laughs> Probably not now. No, mine wasn't God. Why do you think God saved you? Could you imagine somebody like what's his name? The guy from the from uh, Indianapolis Colts that retired, Tony Dungy. Never, they never cussed. No, 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 no you know, I mean, I'm sure they did on their own, but he would, he would, he was just a soft-spoken man. This man, this guy will never make it as a coach. He, was, he, he led him to the Super Bowl. One of the greatest coaches that there ever was. Named Tony Dungy. And soft-spoken, respectable. His, his teammates weren't cussing, fighting, and all this stuff. They were very respectable. And he taught them more than football. He taught them how to be men. And I'm telling you, you look around and you see the NFL today, and, and, and how many, five, seven men beating their wives? These are millionaires making hundreds of millions of dollars. They got busted. They got kicked out. They lost all their money. They're in court. They're going to go to jail. All this stuff. Why? Because they never learned how to be a son. They never learned how to treat a woman. They never had any guidance in their lives. They just learned to make millions. They run good. They do all that. But the character, God's concerned with what's inside more than what you can do on the outside. He's looking for spiritual fathers. He's looking for spiritual mothers who can not only train your own house well, but can go out and find others. You can begin to start training them as well. Yeah. Finding young women and some of you older women that you're able to speak into their lives. The Bible says it. Teach them how to be wives. Teach them how to be godly mothers. Teach them how to take care of their house. They need to be taught. They need to be trained. We don't have authority just so we can come in here and cast... <laughs> Cast the devil out of each other. One of the churches in town, and probably some of you know which one, but they were they, they said, Man, Pastor, every service we're casting devils out of the out of the church, out of our leadership. Every Sunday, not once in a great while. Every Sunday our leaders are coming and we're casting devils out. Probably cast it out of the pastor too. And I said, What kind of church is that where you have to cast the devil out of your your leaders and your and your congregation, every service. Oh, they, we, <laughs> oh my goodness, what a trip. We're not supposed to have devils. We're not supposed to live like the world and all this stuff. We're casting devils out of society, out of them people out there, or maybe out of people that, that, are, that are walking a fence or they're, they're being harassed by a demon or whatever, or they're sick. God gave you authority to pray for sick people. You don't have to know how. Just do it. You'll learn. You with me? You don't have to know how. Go to seven steps on how to anoint somebody with oil. No, just open the, the thing and slap them. <laughs> slap it on them, run them on their face and everything. And man, and then just pray, God, heal them. Well, what do you pray? Oh, thou hast lordest. You don't need to say no, just chant it, Lord, heal this bomb. <laughs> oh, you don't have to know everything. You just got to be obedient to do it. And God teaches you along the way how to do it. You with me? You don't have to know any special thing or anything like that. Well, I don't know. What is your name, devil? <laughs> I never do that. One time I did that when the devil got me mad. It was right here. These ladies were over there trying to cast them. The devil, I'm not coming out. And I walked into the back. I go, what's going on? And they said, this lady, there's, we cast devils out, but this last one won't come out. And I walked up and I go, what's wrong with him? And she goes, oh, I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> Just like that. Why? I'm offended. Why don't you want to talk to me? What did I do to you? And started talking back, and I said, you know what? Shut up. I go, what's your name? He said something, and I could have sworn she said like Legion or something. She said something. I go, what? I go, you know what? Never mind. You're a liar anyway. You're telling me you named the wrong name. I said, in the name of Jesus, come out of her, man. That thing came out, I think it did, I don't know, she ain't here. I think it just faked me out. <laughs> oh dear Lord. 
but he, he, he gives you power, he gives you authority. Acts 1.8 said, and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. Why does he give us the Holy Ghost? Why does he give us authority and power so we can be witnesses? When you go out and you're telling people like Tim, I'll ask him about it tonight, but when he went out and was witnessing to a kid that didn't, you know, just looking around, distracted, not really paying attention, but he noticed. When you notice that, let me pray for you. Because yeah. that is a token, that is a sign that you can't do all by yourself. You need help from God. And Tim told the guy, come with us to the church and God will heal you. And I'm thinking, what are you talking about? Man, you're putting us on the spot. Sure enough, that guy came to the church and the whole way after he comes, Jesus, please, please, Lord, touch this young man. He said, if you bring him, you'll you're heal him, Lord. And when we got to the church, Tim prayed for that young man and he got not only healed, he got saved and all his friends got saved with him. That's a sign that your words ain't going to do. When God heals you, when, or when God heals them, they'll be willing to listen to you. You with me? When God cast the devil out, we had a, we had our church, we started in Bessemer Park, and I was telling them, and there was this one lady, Debbie O'Rourke, man, God bless her soul. She was, a, she was a little holiday ham, but she used to be, she used to be a ballerina. She was a ballerina. My man, she had lost her ballerina. And she would prove to you that she was a ballerina. She like, she would do this stuff. And one time she had a, we had a skit, man. And she done a, a she, you know, they jump up like that and the men catch them. I don't know if you guys have ever met Pastor Nathan. But he's about, a, I don't know, about 35 and 65. Just a stick, man. And, and, and this lady, man, she, 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 she was like, no, watch, I'll show you. She said, I'm going to run. Nathan, catch me, Nathan, huh? She just she leaped up into his arms and boom! He was on the floor. She was on top of him. And I was like, man, that she killed him. I just seen long old legs in his head. I was like, oh, Jesus. We were at my house one day doing a Bible study and I invited my nephew Barry there who was just a, a character and a half. And he's just a gang member, crazy, just a trip. He was, he was in his own, in his own, you know, element. He was just out there, you know. And I said, come to, stay with us for having Bible study. So her and I, Uncle, I'll stay. He had to be 12, man, maybe. And he just didn't know much. But he always told me, remember that lady at your Bible study? So it's him and the holiday ham, man. She's telling us, and I, I used to do the splits, she says. <laughs> and we were laughing, and I was like, nah, you know, hey, man, let's go on. No, 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 you don't believe me? No, we believe you, sister. I mean, you know what I mean? My nephew's just like, this is getting good. He's just watching. He's like, could you do it? She's like, yeah. But, huh? Let's see. You know, I'm like, no, no, no. Let's move on. We're going to go back. Let's flip to our Bibles. And she, she got up just, wow. She just, she just went open and just slammed on that floor. <laughs> anyway. This lady was the one. We were telling, man, you know what? We're going to go pray for the demon possessed. We're going to cast devils out. We're in Bessemer Park, and we sent him out, man. And there she comes with a drug addict. She's pulling him, and he's following along. All, what are you doing? What are you doing? He was all messed up. She said, Pastor, Pastor. She had this guy. I got him for you. You said get him. Here he is. She drug him. That's compelling him to come in. <laughs> He looks up, he didn't even know. He couldn't even walk because he had him dragging. And we started we started witnessing. He fell to the floor, demon possessed. Started it's like a snake slithering in the grass, vomiting out of his mouth. And we're like, oh dear Jesus. What did you go do? She's like, I'm gonna call 911. I said, get over here. You're not calling 911. So we're gonna cast the devil out of him. And we did. We prayed over that man. We, in the name of Jesus, come out! And all of a sudden, he was like on his, he was like on his fingertips, just ah! And all of a sudden, he just dropped to his stomach, and I thought, oh dear God, he's dead. 
he laid there and God said, I set him free. And that's the one that he rolled over a few minutes later and he said, would you read me the word of God? And we begin to read the word. Demons don't ask you to read the word. And he says, can we sing a song? Can we worship God? And we begin to praise and worship God. And that day he was set free from that demon, that drunken demon that had him down. And we're nobody special. We're just like you. We just, we're just a Christian. We have a title of a pastor, but all, the only difference is, is that I've just, I've just been dumb enough to do what God said. He said, cast the devils out, I just cast the devils out. He said, lay hands on the sick, and I laid hands on the sick, and some of them got sick, some of them got healed. You with me? And I was just dumb enough to believe God's word. And if that's what it takes, I want to be dumb for Jesus. I want to be a fool for Christ. You don't have to be smart in this place. You could have never went through second or third grade, and you say, "Well, I'm not. I'm not smart. I can't read. I this and that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. That didn't say there in Mark 15. You need to do that, did it? It said all you got to do is believe in your heart. You with me? He said, not only will you be saved, he said, but you'll cast out devils. You'll speak in tongues. You'll you'll, you'll lay hands on sick, and they will recover. He gives us power. What do we do with the demonic? nation man with opportunities you with me yeah. the two men that flew over to africa went to a nation and, and and they went over there and they were shoe salesmen took a bunch of shoes plain load of shoes and one man went over there and he looked and he looked at all the people he didn't even take it he didn't even stop to talk he looked seen them with no shoes and walked back and got in the plane he says there's no they don't wear shoes here bro he says man let's, I'm, I'm just gonna leave and he left the other one said, man, he says, man, look at the opportunity. Man, every one of them needs shoes. Man. I'll sell out here, he said. Man. Huh? Man. What's the difference? The vision, the opportunity. I mean, if there's demons and there's devils, you don't have to be afraid. You got power. You're a super Christian. You're a super saint. Cast it out. Come on now. You see somebody sick or if you get sick. Practice on yourself. Yeah. Lay hands on yourself. Get some get some oil and anoint where it hurts in the name of Jesus. And watch when it watch when you get healed. Pastor, it worked. <laughs> huh? They prayed for sister, huh? They prayed for sister. She found a lump. She went in. They took a picture, everything, and they it was when she went back. They, 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 they were looking for it, they did an x-ray, whatever, and they said, they, they, this, didn't you get x-rays? Wasn't there something there? He said, yeah, it was, but it's not there no more. He said, I know. Yeah, I, got, I got proof it's not there anymore. I was like, man, you got to share that. Yeah. You got to share things like that with the church, because they don't believe me. Yeah. They'll believe her, though, because she don't have nothing to prove. You with me? She's not trying, I didn't pay her, say, you don't make me look good or anything like that. She ain't got nothing to prove. All she says, man, I, I used to have a problem and now I don't. Yeah. You with me? And God's still working on us. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Amen? And he's not going to stop, but all you need to do is believe. Yeah. Believe. He's given you power. Stand with me this morning. He's given you power this morning. We, we're, we don't run, we don't hide, and we don't give in or give up. We run to the Lord. We believe and have faith. You know why? Because your family, they may, they may be Catholic, or they may be Mormon, or Jehovah Witness, or whatever, or just flat out heathen. Don't believe in God, don't be atheist, all this other stuff. But the moment they need help, and they call on you, and you walk up, and you say, you know what, I'm going to pray for you. And with your faith in the name of Jesus, and they're healed, how are they going to argue with you? That's a sign from God. That's a token from God. And he says, every one of you have this gift. Every one. So don't say, well, it's not for me. If you believe in Jesus, believe, it, believe his word. Amen. He's given you power over that. Over, de over demons, over devils, he's given you power. Don't, don't be afraid of anything like that. You with me? Yeah. If anything, that Holy Ghost ought to rise up. You ought to be like, you know, na, 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 in the name of Jesus, come out! Yeah. 
fly to the rescue, man. Jump the pew. I can run through a troop, leap over a wall. The word of God says, nothing's impossible. Didn't you guys read the scripture, Philippians, what, 4, 13 or 19? I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. It's in there. Read it. It's in your Bible. You with me? Amen. Amen. He's given you that power. Aren't you glad? Amen. Aren't you glad for the power of God inside of you? No situation's too hard. Anybody here ever been healed? Amen. Let me see your hands if God has healed your body. Look around. For those of you that don't believe, look around. And after church, ask him, what did he do for you then? If you don't believe me. Amen? How many of you could say literally you've had a devil or a, or a demon or a demonic influence cast out of your life or God has set you free from that? How many of you could lift your hand on that one? Huh? You guys used to do drugs? Yeah. Come on now. Amen. Every single, well not every single one, but most of you were you used to use drugs. Yeah. Or you drank. Yeah. Don't you know they call that spirits? Yeah. Every time you drink a beer, you're ingesting Satan into your body. Yeah. Every time you smoke weed or drugs or take a pill or snort it, you're ingesting the devil, Satan, and his whole influence into your body, into That's your right. life. That's right. That's why you shouldn't do that. Do you want to do that? Oh, man, if I had known that, I would have never done it. You with me? Pastor Ray said, you told Johnny, you guys are, you guys are like witches. I think Brother used to say you used to be around where they'd be making meth and, and, and stuff like that, right? Making meth? Yeah, devil, you dirty devil. Yeah, he's mad. They'd be making the, 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 the meth or whatever, and sometimes they even they stand around it. And there, there's people that even, I heard of even gang members in this city chanting and, and saying stuff over them, drugs. That's witchcraft. And there you are. The devil didn't even have to come. There you are. Putting the demons inside of you. No more. No more devils. You got devils this morning, we'll cast them out in Jesus' name. We'll, we'll, we'll set you free this morning in Jesus' name. You don't have to carry those anymore. You with me? Amen? You're sick in your body. We'll pray for you. God will heal you this morning. Amen. See, some of you still don't believe. <laughs> Amen. I want to open this altar for you.